and to keep an eye on developments. Now, geographically, the forest cover of Cross River State is 58% in Nigeria, and the state government has concrete plans to surpass that impressive figure. The ambition is to plant 1 million trees annually. Wow! To achieve this, the government has declared what it tags Green Holiday, a day set aside for the planting of trees. Omo Basi Edit reports that the first edition featured the Green Carnival across the 18 local government areas of the state. Another carnival here in Calabar, the North River State capital. But this time around, it's not the usual Christmas carnival which you are used to. What we have here is called the Green Carnival, and it's aimed at planting one million trees every year. Cross River State is endowed with a rich rainforest and currently boasts of 58% of the entire forest cover in Nigeria. With the proposed superhighway, which would inadvertently affect the rainforest, the Green Carnival is to ensure that one million trees are planted annually. <laughs> Governor Ben Ayade, whose brainchild is a green carnival, said the tree planting would once again provide a platform for youth to make money by cultivating nurseries, which would make available seedlings annually. We will tell the world that we are indeed planting one million trees as a justification to support the deforestation process, not only for the superhighway, but for the industrial farms that are yet to come. The Green Carnival, marked with a green holiday, saw offices, shops, and markets closed to give way for a successful event. Participants described the event as laudable. A planting of trees spiritual. That's why the church is fully represented here. You know, the habit of planting trees so that uh, in the depletion of other trees, this one will, will grow up and beautify the environment. Now it's my turn to go plant my tree. Also ensure that you plant a tree today. It helps to keep the environment green and clean. Amazing afforestation drive there by Cross River State. Other states need to take a cue. It was a moment of joy when the conjoined twins delivered in Boko local government area departed for Yola in Adamawa State on the invitation of someone who offered to assist. The West Se Akame, who visited the residence of the conjoined twins, parents has more. That NTA exclusively reported the delivery of conjoined twins on 13th July in Boko local government area of Benue State and the complications that trailed their situation. This is more so as the babies had separate heads and hands but shared same lower limbs. Medical experts on initial examination said their complex anatomy presented a challenge. This has drawn the attention of various groups and individuals. A visit to the family of the conjoined twins shows that their house is under lock and key. The neighbors of the family who expressed empathy explained that they have gone to Yola on invitation of an individual who has offered to help them. At the health facility where the twins were delivered, medical personnel said, Apart from the conjoined twins, there had been several other cases of abnormal deliveries. But apart from the conjoined twins, we had two other cases that were strange to us. The, the other one, the, they were, the, the, the babies were born twins. And the, the other one, one of the twins was not born with anus, and uh, she dissecting through her vagina. And the other... She's about five years now, and the other one we delivered like three years back. Uh, the, the, the child was born male and female, private parts. For now, the hope of the parents and other well wishers is that a medical solution can be found one way or the other. <laughs> That was quite touching, and we will keep you posted on the progress of the twins. 
It was a game of different tales from different sides when junior secondary school three student of Federal Government Girls College, Buari, Camila Sani Manga, died. Kesi Busari Ahmed, who KG Busari Ahmed, who has been following the story, brings us up to speed. What was the dream like? Yeah, her dream was uh, to become a medical doctor after finishing school, probably because of uh, the experience she had uh, while uh, growing up. That was a mere dream which was never to come true, as it is said to have been shattered due to sheer negligence in some quarters, according to findings. And of course, due to the fact that Camila Sani Manga has since the 6th of May 2019 been buried and covered deep down six feet. Here at the Gudu Cemetery, with the root cause of the death yet to be known to the parents officially. To set the record straight, late Camila Sane Manga was a GSS3 student of the Federal Government Girls College, Buari, before she was allegedly murdered by a fellow student. One of her friends contacted me uh, through Facebook and told me what actually happened, that, uh, that uh, my daughter was hit in the stomach by one of her schoolmates. And as a result of that, my daughter vomited blood her stomach uh, swelled up, and that's what led to her demise. It is a different story from the school's authority, though. It was her mates, that's her close friends, that told us that that night at about 11 p.m., they were still awake in the dormitory, that they ate um, gari soaked in water. When they finished eating the gari, then another one of them brought mangoes, and they ate mangoes. Uh, at about 2 a.m., she got up to ease herself. So she told her that her tummy was aching. But just when Camila's father was trying to take the incident as an act of God, though with a great deal of suspicion, one of Camila's classmates searched for him on the Facebook to offer the scrolled information and mentioned other students who were present and could corroborate her information. At the Buari General Hospital, efforts to get the chief medical director and the head of clinicals to speak proved abortive. As the hospital secretary, who contacted them through phone, said they were away on official assignment, while a very senior medical officer, who opted to speak to us behind the camera, said Camila Manga was brought in dead to the hospital on the 5th of May 2019. Meanwhile, the school's authority says Camila was not dead in the school. Now, let's look at it this way. From the Federal Government Girls College, Buari, to the General Hospital, Buari, it's barely a 10-minute drive. Both Camila's father and the school authority agreed that the father of the deceased did not spend up to 40 minutes before getting to the hospital after they had called him. So. If you add up the 10 minutes drive from the school to the Buari General Hospital, it gives you less than an hour. Now, how possible is this? I got several calls from Fragoming Girls College Buari that there was an emergency involving my daughter, Camila Sanimanga. So I quickly picked my wife and headed straight to the uh, Buari General Hospital. On getting there, the vice principal Showed, uh, showed me a body of my daughter, which had become uh, very, very stiff, meaning uh, she died uh, long before I was even called. Rigum, it's called rigomotis. Rigomotis is the process of the muscles breaking down and a corpse, which is a dead person, stiffening up. That process can start as early as four hours after death and can last up to 72 hours or more. Honestly, I am so shocked. So up till now, we've not had any concrete reason from the school. Now, come to think of it, whether Camila died in the school or died on the way to the hospital, or better still, died in the hospital. Shouldn't the incident have been reported to the police in the area? Did the school report to the police? Well, you find that... Um, Well, let me call it an oversight. Let me call it an oversight okay. on the part of the college that we did not um, inform the police. If somebody, same thing happened to a child under your care, 
that is criminal in nature. You do not, first of all, report to the police, report to the hospital, minor issues you can treat at the clinic, okay? And then from there, if you invent any point that death arises, you are duty bound, you know, to report to the Nigerian police. Failure to do this raises prima facie the case of criminal negligence. At the end of the investigation, if there is any complicity, if there was any attempt to cover anything, we will be able to unearth. This loophole, experts say, may have denied the police the right to conduct a coroner inquest. Or else, why should the bereaved be the one to report the death of her daughter to the police? A girl in the custody of the Federal Government Girls College, Buari. Well, there are so many questions here begging for answers, especially the confessions made by late Hamila's class and hostel mates, who were first-hand witnesses as the incident occurred in their hostel. The Federal Ministry of Education, the Federal Government Girls College Authority, and of course, the Nigerian Police FCT Command sure have a great role to play in the true course of Hamila's untimely death must be unraveled. The parents have said so much, and some of the students have also said uh, so much as well. But Camilla here cannot tell us what actually happened. As you can see, she is below six feet. That was a mysterious incident. Expectedly, justice will prevail in the end. Time to go on. Chief Whip of the Senate, Ojuz Okalu, Federal Ministry of Agriculture, and the National Leadership of the Radio, Television, and Theatre Arts Workers Union, Ratao. This, we believe, is the right decision, and we are the right people. It's about taking opportunity and hope back to the streets of Nigeria so that our people will go back to preparation. The land we have is our strength. We should go back. Everywhere should be food in Nigeria. It will help us not only to produce a bill back in you, but to raise motions that will fast track this thing you are talking about. Professor Mohammed Bashirnu, who has advocated creation of the Office of the Evaluation General of the Federation as part of reforms in land administration in the country. The Professor of Estate Management and Valuation, valuation made the suggestion during the 72nd inaugural lecture of the